lower LDL cholesterol by 49%. How are you going to do that without medication? Well, this is the Indian gooseberry, otherwise known as AMLA. My name is Dave. I'm a pharmacist, and I was shocked to find this research. It's very remarkable. Uh, 2012, we have a study looking at AMLA versus simvastatin, which is Zocor, a cholesterol-lowering medication. Uh, they had 60 people in the study with high cholesterol, divided them into two groups. One group got the AMLA, the other group got the simvastatin. And after 42 days, they found that there was actually a better effect in the AMLA group. See, the LDL was lowered to a greater extent in the group that received the AMLA compared to the group that received the simvastatin. Okay, good. So that study we looked at, there were problems with it. It was tiny, only 60 people, and it was not a randomized trial. So do we have other evidence to look at? Well, we actually do. Yes, 2011. Here's a paper. This was also small, though, just 32 people. Does not appear to be randomized, but they took these 32 people, ultimately eight different groups of people, each having, having only four people in them. So very tiny little groups. Uh, not a great study, but here's what they found. Anybody who got a dose of AMLA had a tremendous lowering in their LDL cholesterol, uh, big time. So that's something to look into, right? Uh, they also looked at fasting blood glucose in this paper. And again, the AMLA groups had a big reduction. So those are important things. Uh, in America in particular, we have this cardiometabolic mess that we're dealing with because people are eating a lot of refined refined sugar, refined flour, um, just, just a disaster. So something that could help with that could go a long way. Uh, now here's a third paper. This is from 2019, and I actually like this paper. Um, this is a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled multi-center clinical trial. So all of those words I just said are very important. In other words, this is a great trial design. 98 people, uh, there were there were 98 people and they were divided into two groups. One group received AMLA and the other received placebo. Now this is not just AMLA. Um, rarely is AMLA purely AMLA, just studied. It's just not, uh, there, there's somebody with an interest that has to pay for this, right? So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But what they found was after 12 weeks, there was a significant drop in total cholesterol, about a 25% drop in total cholesterol in the group that took the AMLA. And then also LDL dropped pretty good there too, you can see. So promising. Now that's only 500 milligrams of AMLA extract. That's a relatively low dose compared to the previous paper we looked at where people were getting one gram, two grams, or three grams a day. Um, now, if you look at this paper, you dig down at the bottom, you'll see that the authors acknowledge the gracious help of Arjuna Natural LTD for providing the AMLA extract, in parentheses, Trilo. Um, so that indicates to me, okay, there is a uh, corporate interest involved. And you'll read about the funding right below that. The study was sponsored by Arjuna Natural LT, LTD. If you look that company up, they are a botanicals, pharmaceutical, uh, nutraceutical, nutri, nutraceutical company. So they're basically providing AMLA extract, which is like a tweaked form of the AMLA. Like they've done something to like make it uh, their own, to make it proprietary. And then they're basically having it tested here. They can show the benefit now they can have like scientific research to support the use of their particular product and that can help them sell their product. Now, I would not use that. I would just use AMLA powder. AMLA powder will probably work better. So I think it's funny too, if you read a competing interests, which that's the same thing as conflicts of interest. The authors declare that they have no competing interests. Well, what about the fact that the drug company well, it's not a drug company, but what about the fact that this nutraceuticals company funded and provided the, um, the experimental intervention for the study? That's kind of a conflict of interest, is it not? Anyway, I digress. So if you were going to take AMLA, AMLA powder, 
how much would you want to take? I would base my decision off that second study, even though not a great study, but still to maximize the effect, it looks like roughly two to three grams a day of amla powder would be optimal. And that equates to about a half a teaspoon a day. And you can do different things with that. Mix it into your oatmeal. If, you, if you're eating oatmeal, mix it into your cereal probably. Um, it does have a sour and bitter taste. It's not a good taste. Uh, another option is to blend it into a smoothie. And then that'll cover the taste up pretty good. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.